In this video, we'll talk about systemic lupus erythematosus. Systemic means involving multiple organs and erythematosus means reddening of the skin. So let's see what are the disease pathology, signs and symptoms and the genetic and environmental cause. Systemic lupus is an autoimmune disease which involves multiple organs. And anti-nuclear antibodies are the key cause of these disease. The characteristic of this disease is a vast array of anti-nuclear antibodies or ANAs. And one of the characteristic feature of this disease is a butterfly-shaped malar rash on the cheeks. Now females are more susceptible to systemic lupus erythematosus. Anyone can develop systemic lupus but there are some disposition in female that make them more vulnerable. In fact 9 out of 10 people with lupus are women. Now there is a gender bias of systemic lupus and many of the genes or risk genes are associated in the X chromosome and also there are hormonal factors which can attribute to this bias. The prevalence of this disease is two to threefold higher in blacks and Hispanics compared to whites. So overall, there is a strong genetic predisposition of lupus. Now let's talk about what really happens in the systemic lupus. So the systemic lupus is characterized by these immune complexes. So these immune complexes are made up of anti-nuclear antigens and specific antibodies against them and all these immune complexes leads to various autoimmune effects and immune reactions. All of these are characterized as type 3 hypersensitivity re reaction and which is very common in, sy in systemic lupus. So all these immune complexes are deposited on several uh, places such as skin or in epithelial layers and these immune complexes attract an, uh, specific cell types such as dendritic cell, macrophages or neutrophils. All of these cells can secrete several cytokines which are inflammatory in nature and overall lead to a huge inflammation in that particular tissue. Now injury of skin joints and kidney is very common and prominent in systemic lupus. Now question is why autoantibodies are produced in systemic lupus erythematosus? Now generally our immune system protects our body from any time type of harmful pathogen. So whenever a pathogen let's say a virus enters our body Specific antibodies are generated against the virus which coat the virus and inac inactivates it. Generally, our immune cells does not produce antibody against our own cells, let's say an epithelial cell. And this is known as tolerance. But this tolerance mechanism is perturbed in case of systemic lupus erythematosus. And autoreactive B cells or plasma cells are produced which secretes antibody against our own cells. So let's discuss the genetic risk of systemic lupus. Now there are specific alleles such as HLA-DQ which has been reported to be highly associated with the onset of systemic lupus. Now there are many other uh, antibodies which are generated in systemic lupus such as antiphospholipid antibodies, anti, uh, uh, antibodies against double-stranded DNA, etc. Now, some of the lupus patients have inherited deficiencies in complement cascade molecules such as C2, C4 or C1Q. And all of these complement system can also lead to cellular destruction. Now, lack of complement system may impair uh, the removal of circulating immune complexes. Com complement systems are really important to clear up immune complexes. So, genetic sequencing found that there are many many genes which are associated or ca can be considered to be the risk factor genes of systemic lupus.
and all of these genes belong to the category like immune complex processing immune signal transduction and tlr type 1 interferon pathway related genes etc now there are several drugs that can also lead to lupus or can uh, are shown to induce lupus like symptoms such as uh, all of these drugs noted here now there are other environmental risk factors associated with lupus as well one of the common environmental risk factor is uv radiation so when there is uv radiation it it leads to uh, damage in our cells so some of the cells would undergo apoptosis there would be irreversible and irreparable dna damage which would ultimately lead to apoptosis or death of these cells now these cells would eject its all its nuclear comp uh, components and everything so those nuclear components would be now treated as damage associated molecular patterns which can be recognized by cells like dendritic cells which has toll like certain toll like receptors on them and these dendritic cells can eventually display the antigens that mean the antigens of the self uh, cells onto their surface it can present it to cells like t, t cells which make them autoreactive ultimately it can also lead to activation of these autoreactive b cells which secretes antibody against own body cells so as a result what happens is there are autoantibodies and immune complexes which attracts different other cell types which evokes the inflammatory responses and this is how damages happen in systemic lupus now we understand why these anti uh, uh, antigens are known as anti nuclear antigens and the antibodies are really important in the development of lupus all of these immune complexes can circulate throughout the body and also it can be deposited in the blood vessels which can attract neutrophils and thereby damaging the blood vessels itself now sometimes there are specific carbohydrates present in the rbc membrane also there are specific phospholipids which are present in the rbc membrane are detected by these autoantibodies and this leads to like complement mediated lysis and this leads to damage of these rbcs and that is why a lot of rbc cells are uh, damaged during lupus which can explain that reddening of the skin part now let's talk about the clinical clinical manifestation of the lupus so clinical manifestation of lupus is highly highly variable different patient shows different kind of signs and symptoms so here are some list of that on the left hand side you can see clinical manifestation and you can see prevalence in patients so one feature is very common all these hematologic complications reddening of the skin lysis of rbc these things are very prevalent in all the patients almost 100% patients with lupus show these kind of problems other than that arthritis is present in 80% skin lesions are shown in 85% fever is present in 55% fatigue is present in 80% renal complication in 60 to 70% pleuritis in 45% pericarditis in 25% gastrointestinal complications in 20% and peripheral neuropathy is observed in 15% so many of these symptoms are uh, variable from patient to patient now let's talk about how lupus could be detected and what does anti nuclear antigen means or anti nuclear antibody means so anti nuclear antibodies can be detected using a test known as ana so in this ana ana test is actually a blood test and several cell lines such as hep2 cell lines are used for these ana test hep2 cell lines are specially chosen because these cells has uh, hundreds of antigens which mimics the anti nuclear antigens and that could be detected by these anti nuclear antibodies so in simple words if a patient sample has anti nuclear antibodies it would detect the antigens on the hep2 cells there is al alternative possibility which is no anti nuclear antibodies present in the patient sample in that case there would be no detection okay 
After that, secondary antibodies are added to these samples, which would ultimately allow us to understand the immunofluorescence pattern. So immunofluorescence pattern is actually immunofluorescence pattern is actually the determination factor of these tests. In short, presence of immunofluorescence is actually a measure for the ANA test. Now a scientist can look a scientist or a medical individual can look at different anti nuclear antibody pattern and can guess about uh, the disease. So let's see how to interpret the ANA result. So if the pattern is homogeneous, most likely the individual might have systemic lupus, rheumatoid arthritis or something. And all these other patterns such as speckled, peripheral or nuclear pattern has other interpretation. So ANA test is basically a fundamental screening method. It's not a confirmatory test. Additional blood tests need to be done in order to understand or diagnose systemic lupus. And if ANA test is positive, that means you might have some amount of anti-nuclear antibodies, but further test has to be performed. So that pretty much summarizes the videos, uh, that pretty much summarizes the concept of ANA and systemic lupus erythematosus in this video. If you want more notes regarding this, you can watch my Facebook page. You can follow me on Instagram. You can support my channel using the super like option. Anyway, you can get dynamic flashcards in the Facebook page. And you can also access my course in Unacademy, which is India's biggest online learning platform using a code.